Today we are going to deal with a subject that is so vast that to understand it well we have to cover some purely theoretical issues first. My name is Michal Mruz, join me in an episode on steam and more precisely rubber hoses for steam. You might think that the days of steams were over many years ago. Well, there's nothing more wrong because steam is used in many important sectors, including production of electricity, food processing in the food industry, or vulcanization of rubber products. Before I show you some house examples, let's see what's coming up today. We will learn about types of steam and the parameters they depend on. We will have a quick look at steam hoses, not made of rubber. We will tell you what materials rubber steam hoses are made of. We will talk about the right selection of a hose and at this point I will show you some of the hoses, clamps and fittings from our range. I will tell you about the proper maintenance of your rubber hoses and show you what happens to the hoses if this maintenance is neglected. Finally, we conclude by answering the most frequently asked question. So, types of steam. Yes, you have not heard it wrong. There are several types of steam which affect hose in different ways. Let's imagine a closed container of water that we heat up. When the boiling point of this water is reached, the first steam bubbles appear. When further heated, more and more water will change to a gaseous state, and this is what we call wet saturated steam. Then all of the water turns to steam. What do we get? It's saturated dry steam. If we continue to supply heat and there's no more water in the container, we get superheated steam. Very simple and fun. Let's move on. Rubber steam hoses, because that what we focus on today, are designed to conduct saturated steam. When steam is concerned, temperature and pressure are closely related. What does it mean? X-axis is pressure, Y-axis is temperature. 180 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 9 bar. We get saturated steam, which is what we are interested in. But when one of these values change, for example when a valve in a system suddenly opens and the pressure drops, our saturated steam turns into superheated steam. The same applies when the temperature drops or rises. This is why it is so important for the service life of rubber hoses to keep these working conditions stable. In steam systems, steams flow through rigid pipe, steam pipeline. When we need flexible connection, we use flexible steam hoses such as steel hoses, PTFE hoses and rubber hoses. Generally, we use steel hoses and PTFE hoses in equipment and machine where the movement of the hose is predictable as it's forced by the machine. The advantage of steel hoses is only a small risk of the fitting detaching from the hose. Damage to such hose is usually just a small hole through which steam leaks, so it's not catastrophic. However, due to the bend radius of steel hoses, their performance in dynamic installation is limited. The same applies to PTFE hoses, but here the material is more flexible and the hoses are more forgiving. Rubber steam hoses are usually used as longer multimeter hose assemblies for manual handling. Once we have this information, we can proceed with hose selection and we will start with Patos hose. This is very flexible hose for hot water and steam transfer. The white inner layer meets FDA requirements, so outer layer is resistance to vegetable and animal fats. It's reinforced with synthetic cords, it's widely used for hot water and steam cleaning and washed down in the food industry. The next hose is a star that has already appeared in one of our episodes and this is Steam Star. Hose with textile reinforced, designed for saturated steam. The hose is widely used in the industry for low pressure saturated steam. The outer layer is made of pinprint EPDM rubber. It is a perfect combination of price and quality. Then we have Victoria hoses. Victoria, it's robust and flexible delivery hose with reinforcement for saturated and superheated steam transfer. 
can be temporarily used for superheated steam up to 232 degrees Celsius and 18 bar pressure. Another hose is Victoria EN ISO 6134. It is a hose that complies with the requirements of the standard. The standard specifies diameters, construction, material, labeling, test specification and so on. As for standards concerning the hoses, I won't elaborate on each one here because it's pretty boring. Let me just say that there are three most known standards for rubber steam hoses, which you can see at the top of the screen. Another hose is Victoria Red. The parameters of this hose are the same as of Victoria hose I showed you earlier, but it has a more visible red outer layer that indicates a high temperature. We also offer Victoria Premium hose, which increased popcorning resistance. What does it mean? We will find out in a moment. Vapufer is another hose in the range. The parameters of this hose are very similar to those of Victoria hoses. When it comes to this hose, the most important is its oil resistance outer layer. Vapufer hose is compliant with ISO EN6314 as is Victoria. And now it's time for fittings and clamps used for rubber hoses. This is a huge topic, so today I will try to give you some basic ideas at least. Steam fittings and clamps are made of steel or zinc plate cast iron, stainless steel or brass. The fittings have a serrated hose tail with a lock for the clamps to grip it when the bolts are tightened together. Rubber steam hose can be assembled to the fittings in a variety of ways. Why do we recommend mounting the fittings with special designed safety clamps? Because it's the safest and most reliable way. In the case of fittings crimped with ferrule, the hose material loses its resilience and shrinks as a result of pressure and temperature. This the ferrule comes loose. We cannot control the condition of the hose. If bolt type reusable safety clamps are used, it's possible to inspect the hose and the bolts can be retighted before each use to eliminate any flake. If the hose gets damaged at the fittings, you can easily cut off the damage section and assemble the fittings by yourself. You cannot do it with crimped ferrule. As for crimped ferrule, you can certainly use them, but for PTFE hose. Now a quick look at the hose inserted. As is always the case, the correct use of a hose can greatly extend its service life and when dealing with a dangerous medium such as steam, this is the most important issue. We should pay particular attention to rubber lumps or blister forming on the hose, cracks that expose the braid, leakage of steam near the fittings or in any other spot along the hose, flattening or kinks, a drop in steam flow rate indicates swelling of the internal layer. The holes usually fail near the fittings where they are exposed to excessive bending and deformation. There are several destruction effects of steam on hose, separation of inner hose layer and popcorn. Here the condensate penetrates the inner layer of the hose wall. When the steam flow again, there is a sudden increase in temperature and volume of this condensate, leading to its explosive discharge, rupturing the inner layer and causing destruction to look similar to the surface of a cauliflower. This is why we can often come across the recommendation to drain after use. Corrosion of steel reinforcement. The gases contained in steam, that is oxygen and carbon dioxide, also penetrate the hose material and are strong corrosive agents, and corrosion can progress very quickly at high temperature. Therefore, the reinforcement wires should be protected, for example with a brass coating. To prevent the corrosion process, the water is chemically treated, or put simply, the air is removed from the water. The third problem is a thermoplastic effect. But what is it? Flowing saturated steam at a higher temperature will cause less damage than cooler water flowing through the same hose. Why? 
the saturated steam flowing through the hose condensers into droplets or a tiny layer of condensate that separates the hot steam from the hose wall. In addition, there is air in the water used to generate the steam, which forms another tiny screen further separating the steam from the condensate. As a result, these two layers of condensate and air isolate the hot steam from the inner surface of the hose. When hot water flows through, these layers are missing and the holes heat up more. This leads to the plasticization of the material resulting in the large reduction in the pressure resistance of the hose as well as rapid, large and permanent deformation of the rubber under the clamps holding the fitting. The final adverse effect is overheating, oxidation and cracking of the inner layer. Oxidation is agent of the hose material by the oxygen contained in the steam. Finally, we answer the frequently asked question. Can steam hoses be used for hot water? Rubber steam hoses can be used for hot water at a maximum temperature of about 90 to 100 degrees Celsius. Can steam hoses be worn on hose reels? Of course, as long as the operating principles are followed the host must be fully unwound. You should remember to check the condition of the host periodically and bear in mind that the reel may heat up during operation. Can rubber steam hose be used in oil environments? Absolutely yes, but it is necessary to choose a hose with an oil resistance outer layer. Now we have come to the end. The subject of steam and steam hoses is clearly much broader than that, so feel free to ask questions in the comments.